you know, with all of the talk about how many black voters are no longer satisfied with Joe Biden and they're looking either not to vote or vote for Trump. Well, Republicans want to seize the opportunity to get black voters and Biden is saying he plans to fight back. So let's get into it. Republicans see an opportunity with black voters prompting mobilization in Biden's camp. So Donald Trump isn't known for fostering deep connections with the black community from his earlier days in New York as a realtor developer Trump faced accusations of racist business practices. He spent years spreading the lie that Barack Obama's America's first black president was ineligible to hold office. When he was president, he derided um, African countries as as holes and four congresswomen that he went after very openly uh, through social media. So it does not deter him from seeking another term and Trump is aiming to win over an unlikely constituency, black voters. Have you seen the poll numbers with African-Americans and with Hispanic Americans? But I'm not that surprised because I see it, I feel it. Trump declared during a rally in New Hampshire, days before of the, you know, the primary that took place. We did great in 2016. We did much better in 2020. But there's much more enthusiasm now. There's little evidence that Trump is making significant inroads with Black voters who polls show remain overwhelmingly supportive of Joe Biden, but even minor changes in voting patterns in critical states could shift the race in unexpected ways. For Biden, the biggest risk isn't a dramatic move among black voters towards Trump. It's that such voters frustrated by a range of issues, including the lack of progress emerging from the 2020 racial justice movement simply don't show up at all. And some of the most narrowly divided states could decide the election, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Even minor shifts in turnout could sway the results. Nationally, only 50% of black adults said they approve of Biden. In December, this is according to the AP. So that's down from 86% as of July, 2021. The shift represents a larger drop among adults overall, white adults in particular. At the same time, however, only 25% of black adults said they have a favorable view of Donald Trump. Trump's campaign advisors insist they're aiming to jump on such shifts to spur a political realignment that would upend the Democratic Party decades long advantage with black voters. Well, I thought if we were just 13% of the population, how could you have that much of an advantage? But the Republicans seems to think that the black vote is a huge advantage. We are creating a massive problem for the Democratic Party's base that could be altering for a generation. This is what one of Trump's senior advisors said. That's just an opportunity that we would be remiss if we did not exploit. Cornell Belcher, a Democratic pollster, noted that Obama faced similar challenges with young voters and voters of color. Oh, boy. During the 2012 re-election, 
when many in the Democratic base were frustrated by his perceived slow pace of progress on key goals. I'm not surprised that Joe Biden right now starts off underperforming among young voters. I'd be surprised if he didn't, but that's what campaigns are for, Belcher said. I'm not panicked that he is down 15 points from where he should be with these voters because I've seen this play before. I've seen it with Barack Obama. Trump is hardly moderating his rhetoric on race as he quickly becomes the GOP dominant presidential frontrunner. Just this month, he mocked Republican rival Nimrata. So he was repeatedly using her birth name. That's what Trump was doing. An American born daughter of immigrants from India and he was calling her Nimbra, Nimbra, okay? The episode had strong overtones of his earlier efforts to rely on racist tropes to question Obama's citizenship and eligibility to serve as president. Trump often highlights endorsements from black celebrities, including the rappers Kanye West and Lil Wayne as evidence of his appeal to the black community. He recently touted the endorsement of a black Rhode Island racial justice advocate. As he endorsed, this endorsement was from Black Lives Matter, a movement of Black Lives Matter grassroots organization denounced. But he prepares for a rematch against Biden. Trump is stepping up his efforts to present a more diverse group of supporters that during his years in the White House, when he presided over a nearly all white cabinet, when he won the New Hampshire primary this week, Senator Tim Scott, the chamber's only black Republican, stood prominently behind him. Scott, who once challenged Trump for the GOP nomination, has emerged as one of his most prominent surrogates and speaks often about his record on race. Trump closes in on the nomination and his VP pick could be a key opportunity to expand his appeal beyond the party's overwhelmingly white base. Scott is among those who frequently mentioned as a potential running mate for Trump. Biden and his fellow Democrats aren't ceding uh, black voters to Trump. The president's kickoff of his reelection bid earlier this month at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, where the 2015 murder of nine black parishioners that were shot to death by Dylan Roof when he joined their Bible study. Yeah, let a demon walk in there. During the visit, Biden denounced the poison of white supremacy. Well, you know what? If you know white supremacy is poison, then why not do a crime bill? You know, you keep telling black crowds that message, because I've heard that from Biden multiple times. If you feel that way, then there should be no issue with you doing a crime bill. And noted some of the accomplishments of his administration, including the appointment of Kentaji Brown Jackson as the first black woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes, but that doesn't put food on the table or pay bills for anyone in the community. It's not a tangible putting Katanji Brown Jackson there. Biden has also spoke of improving economic conditions for people of color. Okay. All right. 
And so he went to South Carolina instead of a predominantly white Iowa in New Hampshire to recognize the diversity of the Democratic Party. Jamie Harrison, the chair of the Democratic National Committee, accused Republicans of promoting fairy tales about their plans to win over black voters. Back here on earth, the reality is their leader, Donald Trump, pals around with white supremacists, is fighting to overturn Obamacare and throw millions of black families off of their insurance and celebrate when his right wing Supreme Court justices vote to block President Biden from delivering mass student debt relief to black families, Harrison said. Harrison is full of crap. All of the things that Biden does is for everyone. It is not exclusively for the black community. So if it's not that, then you don't really have much bragging rights at all. Both parties are fine tuning efforts to win over black voters. So, you know, then it's up to the voters in the melanated community to tell them exactly what you want since they're both trying to win you over and if they don't deliver a plan then you know and we already know i mean seriously then you know neither party cares about you but just put them on the spot with the issues that we're concerned about the reparations the qualified immunity the crime bill you know the things that we talk about all the time and if they turn their nose up at that thing then hey they're not worthy they're not worthy of your vote at that point in time they're not so the republican national committee has established outreach centers focused on minority areas there are 38 such outposts in 19 states catering to various communities the gop plans to add two more outreach centers in 2024. And in contrast to past democratic efforts, the Biden campaign has opted for an early engagement strategy with core constituencies like black voters. The campaign rolled out large investments in African-American media and other outreach in key swing states. Biden and VP Kamala Harris said DNC Chair Harris won't rest until we earn every vote because the stakes are that high. Really? If the stakes are that high, then you shouldn't have any problem to address the issues that we're concerned about and stop telling us that we are concerned about Gaza and we're concerned about um, all these other things, oh, voting rights. No, we already told you what we're concerned about and it would be in the best interest of the political parties and the media in this country to focus on the things that we told you we're concerned about and not all of these other things you keep making up off the top of your head. Y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.